first I have to congratulate everybody that is here tonight. A lot of people receive the information that the information will be here in Poznan tonight. When people see that somebody will talk about their not necessity to eat, a lot of people say, oh, but this is the only pleasure I have in my life. This people is crazy. I never will stop to eat. Nigdy nie przestanę jeść. Our goal is not to make people stop to eat. Naszym celem nie jest odwodzić kogokolwiek od jedzenia. It's just to inform you better what is food in our life. And I want to thank you for your higher self to trust us. Because what we have is just key information for you. But you are going to be the one who will decide what to do with this information. And uh, what you are going to do will change a lot of things in your life. Because once you know that food is not a necessity, and once you understand why it's not a necessity, a lot of things change inside of us. Uh, us. Um, I found this information after a long, long time looking for the key. Since I am very young, I've been, I've been being uh, disturbing by my voices and, and by my memories. My mom tried to put me in psychologist, but didn't, didn't rest more than one month. Because the psychologist was trying to convince me that my problems come from my, from my insecurity and relationship with my mother. But I knew that was not the case. And the other people that I was I always try to tell about the voices and the memories I carry. I always say, oh, don't worry, this is your imagination. But how could be my imagination? Something that somebody I knew that was reality, nobody never told me about it. And a few, few times later, I, I see from in the outside what I knew inside. I am not special. I am not uh, somebody that born with uh, a, a mission. Everybody is special. Everybody has a mission. Just happened that I remember mine. I have, a, I would say, maybe a better memory. I never studied in my life. Not even in the school. I never made part of any type of group. I never participate of any seminar. I try, but uh, in the middle, my voice is saying, get away from here. You have to learn by yourself. <coughs> and that was the way I learned, by myself. I, I used to buy books. A lot of books, I just read the first page. But a lot, I read to the end. Because it was the same message that I was receiving from my higher self. So the books help me to, to show me that I'm not so crazy. So my life was a little different because I never had a diploma. I never had a, a profession. Uh, so my life, my life was different, but not really so different like your life. It's time to change a lot of things. That's why this information that we are going to share with you it's, it's now coming up with more understandable way. But a lot of people are still questioning us. Why nobody know about this? Why this is not in newspaper and TV? Sometimes they get mad and they ask me, why don't you go to Africa and, and help that people that is starving? And I say to people, if I go to Africa now and tell that people that is starving to death, they doesn't need food to survive, they will kill me. Because this information has to come from the top. Because if I say in Africa that they doesn't need food to survive, in the next day will be a doctor there with an old bread, say, no, 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 this lady is crazy, you need this bread, you need this bread. So first, the people that have money to eat has to change their relationship with food. Because you eat 90% more that you need. And you spend a lot of money and time relating with food. 
So when you change your mind about food and the doctors give them a chance to understand our body in a different way, so then we together can inform the Africa people and then they will understand. Now it's just few people that understand this information. The rest of the people still have no idea about what we're talking. But we are very happy to be here and can give you these this keys. And people also ask, but how long this information exists? And the answer is, forever. This, this information is around forever. But in one point in our civilization, this information got completely lost. The way I found this information was a little funny. I am a, I am a writer, I have two, three books in Brazil, and I always study metaphysical and alchemical things, and Are DNA. DNA. So, um, in one point in my life, my aunt comes to my house in Florida with one book and she said like this I was reading this book in a plane and my boss was telling me give this to Evelyn, give this to Evelyn I said okay thank you, thank you and of course I start to read the book and this book was about a group of scientists that went to India in a, in a temple that lived masters that is immortal and they were telling how you can change your DNA. I opowiadali o tym, w jaki sposób zmienić Scientifically. DNA. Sposób naukowy. And I said to Steve. Powiedziałem Steveowi. My love, you should read this book. He went to internet. He bought the book and was everything I needed. To było wszystko, czego potrzebowałem. He understood and he got fascinated. After that book he bought everything about metaphysical and alchemical and DNA. He read more than 60 books after this one. And he wanted more, he wanted more. So he took one word called prana. He went to internet to see what he find about this, this energy. The first thing that came was a jasmine site. And he read and he said, he said, my gosh, this lady doesn't eat food for six years. I was in Brazil and uh, he called me and he said, I stopped to eat. I said, what? Yeah, I found a website but one lady that said that you don't need food to survive and I stopped to eat. I said, oh my gosh, I found somebody more crazy than me. I said, wait, wait, let's talk. Wait for me and, and let's see what happens. So he wrote Jasmine an email and he bought her book. And he was decided. He, his higher self made him just jump for this experience. Because he was so amazed that people doesn't need food to survive. That he said, there is only one way for me to see if this is true. It's passed through the experience. I was panic because when you receive the information depends of the relationship you, you have with food this this take your your sleep for two or three nights and this is what happened with me because I was vegetarian for a long time but I had a very strong relationship with food I love to cook for my friends I love I love to receive people in my house and cook and they mm, delicious <coughs> so I tried to convince him that it's not time for us to do this. And then he came with the mortal knife for me. I would do with or without you. And so I said, Evelyn, you put your husband in this knowledge. How you can how you can let him do this without you? I knew that. A lot of people in India and a lot of masters doesn't eat. I knew that Buddha was five years with zero food. And I knew that, that the one you call Jesus Christ also doesn't eat. And it's not so difficult for you to see this as a true. I am not a master and I don't go to the bathroom for more than one year. So it's very easy to understand that you can be empty 
and you can close this factory and you can open another one. And all these masters teach people about this. But this information is not, it's for free. Nobody make money. And the necessity, and the belief that you need food to survive, create all this industry that we need now. That's why they cut this information. So I had no choice. If the Australian lady was living a normal life and not, not, eat, not eating, Steve and I for sure could do the same. So I had three days to prepare myself. I prepare a beautiful dinner one day before we stop, the Gee. night the night before we stop. Uh, and I said to myself, okay, it's only 21 days. I can do it. And after that, I go back to my food. But my husband said, I'm not going to eat again. Nie mam zamiaru nigdy więcej jeść. And again I was like, oh no. I znowu, oh nie. That will be forever. Ono zawsze. And this was the best decision I had in my life. To była najlepsza decyzja mojego życia. Because when you do this process and understand what is food in our life, a lot of other things open for you. Wiele innych rzeczy otworzy się dla ciebie. A lot of new possibilities. Wiele nowych możliwości. You are not a slave anymore. Nie jesteś niewolny. You are completely free. Jesteś zupełnie wolny. And this is the best feeling you can have. To jest najlepsze uczucie, które ma. If you eat or not, it's your choice. But you have to know that it's your choice. Ale musisz wiedzieć, że to jest twój wybór. And this was the freedom that I was looking for. We decided to do this explanation in a simple and scientific way. So then this make everybody understand that this is physical. Że to jest fizyczność. And you can change your physi physiology using your mind, using your vibration, using your knowledge, and using your power. So Steve will explain how this is possible. But before he, he starts, I have to make you think what is food in your life. So think about it. How much time you spend working to pay, to pay for your food? How much time you spend in the supermarket Get all the boxes and, and glasses and plastics that in the end make a big garbage and pollute our planet. But you don't care, you're hungry. How much time you spend putting all this food in the refrigerator? Then cooking. Then put in the table. Then eating. Then washing. How much time you spend Ile czasu spędzacie? after all this work po całej tej pracy, in the bathroom ubikacji, trying to get away all that food? Żeby pozbyć się całego tego jedzenia. Because if something is good, Jak coś jest dobre, why have to go away immediately after you put it inside? Makes no sense. But anyway, we born like this. We think that God made us like this. So let's go for the food. How much time you spend um, exercising the pizza you eat? People go to Pizza Hut, eat the pizza, and then the next day, oh my gosh, I'm fat. Let me burn this. <laughs> and then they try to burn the pizza. Sorry to say, you can exercise as much as you want. You're not going to paint a thousand, uh, uh, the, 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 a thousand, uh, how do you say this, uh, degrees to burn that calories. But you believe, so sometimes works. Więc czasami to się udaje. Because you believe. Dlatego, że wierzycie. Extra time, you sleep, tired because of the food you have. And then you say, oh, I'm hungry. And then you try to work a little more. But you start to feel a little, oh, my head The machine wants, so you stop your work, you go eat. Now that you finish the food, you go back to work. You're so tired. 
You need at least 30 minutes to this food be processing. Potrzebujesz co najmniej pół godziny na to, żeby zacząć proces trawienny. You can't think. Nie możesz myśleć. Oh, I too much. Zjadłem za dużo. So, how much um, uh, lost productivity? So this is the lost productivity you have when you when you eat. How much money and time you spend going to the doctor? Oh, doctor. Ah, oh, my stomach hurts. I have gastritis. Mam jakieś choroby żołądkowe. I can't go to the bath. My intestines hurt. My kidneys hurt. Everything hurt. Wszystko boli. And then the doctor say to you. Wtedy lekarz odpowiada. Oh, no problem. Take this and this and this and this. And one week will be good. You pay. Oh, thank you, doctor. Thank you. Dziękuję, pani lekarz. You take all that drugs that go away for the environmental as a poison. You feel better after one week, and you go back to your eating. Ninety-five percent of the sickness is straight related with food. It's it's uh, related with everything you put inside of your body. So if you put all this calculation in time and money, you are going to see that. More than 70% of your money and time you use to produce garbage, poison for the environmental, and to create for yourself healthy problems. But you don't know this. That's why we are going to inform you now. So basically what Evelyn explained in the beginning, you can sum up in one sentence. We live to eat, and we eat to die. Now some people ask us, how can you live your life and deprive yourself from this wonderful pleasure of food? Well, as she said, it's not our intention to deprive ourselves of pleasure. But when you go through this process and learn how to stop to eat, you find out that the majority of that pleasure is just the way that your body communicates to you what it thinks it needs. Emotion is the language your body uses to communicate with your mind. So when our body shuts off this factory and turns on this factory, our body doesn't need the food, and therefore the communication stops. So we don't, walk, we don't walk past a restaurant and smell the food and get a strong desire to sit there and eat. No more than a non-smoker smells smoke and has a strong desire to get a cigarette. Also, something else I learned through my life is that when I received an answer that was very clear and simple, the answer seemed to be more correct. The more pure and simple, the more correct. Be very careful when somebody explains something to you that's very complicated or gives you a tool for a job that's very complicated. All they're doing is hiding their ignorance of the subject. When somebody learns something incompletely, they get enough fancy terms and information to throw at the question answer, question asker, to make them feel like they know something. The person walks away not learning anything, but they seem a little amazed at the person's knowledge and all the fancy terms they have. So they think, well, I don't understand it yet, but it's just because I haven't studied and learned all these fancy terms. When you understand something completely, you can explain it to a child. Jak rozumiesz coś w pełni, możesz to wytłumaczyć dziecku. And children can understand what we're talking about tonight. The next thing you need to understand is that if you don't use something in your body, it's going to atrophy. Easy to understand, if you use, crutch, use a wheelchair for 30 years, your legs are going to be pretty weak. The other thing is our body is not so weak that we have to worry about it being attacked by diseases. Z drugiej strony, nie musimy się bać tego, że nasz organizm jest tak słaby, że choroby mogą go zaatakować. Our body is just a breeding ground for bacteria and viruses, and that's mainly because of the mucus in it. Also, our knowledge of the immune system is not exactly correct. We do have systems in our blood that do uh, attack things that are not supposed to be in there, but we do not build up a new defense to a virus by introducing the virus into the system. The next thing we're going to explain is that the endocrine system is what is maintaining and balancing the body. And just like we can tell somebody that's been using a wheelchair for 30 years that doesn't realize they can walk, we're going to show you how easy it is to turn on this energy processing center and turn this one off. For the body, our blood is very important. 
One of the purposes is it's a transportation system for our endocrine system. It transports the hormones that are secreted by the endocrine system, transports the fluids around the body, and helps to keep the body clean. So the stuff that it, 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 it cleans out of the body goes in the blood. And the body knows how important it is to keep the blood clean. So we have kidneys, lungs, our skin, and our liver that help keep this blood clean. So your body is constantly using these systems to keep the blood clean. The problem is, is that we constantly are asking them to clean the blood. So they get very tired, damaged, and they break down. And as they break down, our blood is, our blood is always a little polluted, and this causes the body to break down at a faster rate. The next thing is addictions. What are addictions? The body is always trying to maintain a, a perfect balance. If we put something in the body, for example, like coffee, it changes that balance. The body can't stop us from taking that coffee, so the only thing it can do is compensate. So it reduces its production of whatever that hormone is or chemical to bring the balance which the coffee has brought up to here. Żeby podnieść równowagę back down to here. Żeby z powrotem przywrócić ciało do równowagi. The problem is, is whatever, whatever system in your body that is now having to produce less of that because you are substituting it with coffee also may be responsible for other functions in your body. For example, somebody may say, I don't care, I like to drink 10, cup, 10 cups of coffee a day and I feel fine. It's not a problem for me, I keep my thermos with me, I always have my coffee. The person in the wheelchair may say, you know, I like this thing, no problem, I'll wheel, wheel around the rest of my life with this. But then one day he sees somebody dancing. He says, oh, I want to do that. And he gets out of his wheelchair and he falls. He says, oh, I never realized my legs were also necessary for dancing. So when we ingest these stimulants, like coffee, we're trying to play chemist of the body. But we can never do as good of a job as a body is designed to do. Also, many things that we eat cause us to have cravings for other substances. For example, starch absorbs water. Now, our body creates water, but most of us are dehydrated. Well, if you're eating starch, it's absorbing that water like a sponge. So you're going to have to drink a lot of water to compensate for that. Salt also causes us to crave water. Now, we don't have nerves in our body in that place to feel that, but, it, but it's the same pain to your body that you're putting salt in your eye. So salt, your body knows it's, it's abrasive and it immediately cries out for water. And it retains this water, which is why we get big, until the process is complete and the body perspirates the salty water or urinates the salty water. Your blood likes to be alkaline. If we eat foods that create an acid in the, in the blood, your body will naturally crave a food that is alkaline. So we're constantly playing with this balance. It's like a child in the chemical factory that doesn't know what he's doing and he's putting this chemical in and this chemical in. And sometimes something gets too hot, he puts another chemical in to make it cooler, but then it gets too cold. We can never do as good of a job as our body. Another problem with foods that create an acid condition in the body is they cause our body to lose minerals. So when our scientists and doctors and nutritionists are telling us that we need to drink eight glasses of water a day, we need to take our vitamins, we need to take our minerals, they're, they're correct. If you do this stuff to your body, you do need to do these things to try to keep it in balance. If you put deficient gasoline in your car, you may have to buy a gas additive to help the gas quality. If you use your home kitchen like a full-scale restaurant, you're going to have to do things that most homeowners don't have to do to keep your kitchen in, 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 in a good condition. Health officials recommend 2,400 cal calories a day just to stay alive. Well, that's correct in a normal type of diet. Just like a train that runs off of wood or coal requires a large amount of that wood or coal to keep the engine running. We're going to show you that even though this is an energy processing center, it's a very wasteful and inefficient processor and creates many problems in the body. For example, it clogs up the body with all the junk, restricts the flow of the fluids. The lime salts and minerals create arteriosclerosis, hard arteries, clog up the capillaries, and basically restrict the free flow of blood and fluids around your body. But your body still needs to get a certain amount of blood flow through your body to keep itself clean and functioning. 
So you now your body's got to use more energy to pump that blood through. So you need more calories to create that, create that extra energy. So again, we're trying to show you that this, even though it processes energy, is a very poor processor. We were teaching to believe that this body that we have was created by God this way. We never thought about the possibility that our DNA is so flexible that adapts uh, relate with our uh, necessities and society. Uh, all the scientists start to study only the physical aspect of the body. So our digestive system was being developing uh, basically what we are, we are putting inside of your body. Our stomach is like a bag. If you eat a lot, you have a big bag. If you eat a little, you have a little bag. If you don't eat, you don't have a bag. You just don't need it. All the acids and enzymes and everything that you produce to, to dissolve the food you put inside of you was also being developed to dissolve everything we eat. Because if we don't dissolve that, we will explode. So our DNA is so intelligent that adaptates. We have seven meters of intestine. And some people has a, a big intestine, some people have a little, uh, uh, a thinner intestine. And all this is relate of the quantity of things you put inside of you. We were different. You maybe don't believe, but now that I redesigned my body, I am already different of you. I don't produce more, more acids and the enzymes to dissolve anything. My intestine is not completely empty yet, but it's already empty enough to don't make me go to the bathroom anymore. And it's, now it's thinner. So this is the changes that you start to feel when you stop the eating process. In reality, the scientist knows that as less you eat, longer and better you eat. They know how bad is salt for the body. They know that sugar is poison. They know that the starchy kills in 50 years. But there is a lot of money involved on this. The sickness is the best business in the planet. Doctors doesn't know about healthy. They know about sick. They, for them, everybody has some type of sickness. They say you're not humble. You don't assume your problems. Nobody, nobody is perfect. Perfect is God. And then when I say, yeah, that's exactly why I'm perfect, because I am God. And then they get so offended, because they don't accept the God inside. For them, God is somebody outside. So this is the world we are dealing with. It's many different type of beliefs. And at the same time, we receive the outside information as truth. You believe in things that you see on TV. You believe what you read in the newspaper. When the doctor, sometimes uh, I read the newspaper, discovery, a new type of vaccination for, for cold. So then they develop a, 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 a society campaign for, for shot. Millions and millions of dollars. They go to TV, go take your shot to never be cold again. And people go and make a big line and, okay, my shot. But they never realize that all the shots you have becomes cancer 20, 30 years later. You know why? Because they are putting inside of your body some, some virus. This virus never get away. They, this virus make a house inside of you. And they grow and they grow and they become a tumor. And they know, because all these type of different cancers that is killing people around the planet, they try to convince people that is hereditary. Hereditary. Yeah, that is from, from generation to generation. Because they don't want to tell the truth. And they know they don't need to tell the truth anyway. 
So one day, a uh, long time ago, I have, I have friends that they are doctors. And I have two types of friends that they are doctors. One, they are really nice people. They become a doctor because they want to help. But I have some friends that they become doctors just because it makes a lot of money. And one day, like 20 years ago, one of these friends invited me to go to the university to see a dead body open. I don't like dead bodies. But I said, um, okay, okay, and then I decided to go. When I went to the door to this necrotario, was in the door like this. I, I was what you are, and I am what you gonna be. I couldn't go in because I don't want to see what I'm going to be. And I said to him, oh, no, no, forget about it, because if this person was what I am, and I will be what this person is, I just don't want to see. But anyway, he was telling me that the big challenge when they open a dead body is to be careful to don't cut the, the intestine. Because if they do, they have to run away, because it's, oh, it's impossible to be there. Because it's putrefied. But the sad, it's not, it's not putrefied because the body is dead. It's putrefied now. You don't feel because it's closed. But you can have one idea when you go to the bathroom. It smells horrible. And, and your, your body carries seven meters of this putrefied material. And this we call waste. And the reason why you have all this waste is because you don't need food to survive. Dlaczego mamy w sobie te wydzieliny, te śmieci? Dlatego, że nie potrzebujemy tego, żeby żyć. Because if you, if you need, for sure, your body will use everything. But don't. Your body will only use the energy. Because our cellulose doesn't have a little mouth that eats the, the, the nutrients that you are eating. Your cellulose doesn't eat. No, 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 no. Komórka tak nie robi. Cellulose doesn't eat. Komórka nie je. And you have 43 billions of cells that build your body. The important is to you to know that they doesn't have mouth and they doesn't eat. Cells are nourished by energy, atomic energy. And that's what I'm going to tell you the sources of atomic energy that you have and that really keeps you alive. So this is the body you know. So the body you know, it's composed by these million or billion cells. You have, you have your, your gland system, you have your heart, and you have here all what we call digest system. And a lot of people, when I, when I do my speech, especially people that it's very intelligent, but rational intelligent, ask me, but Evelyn, if we don't need food to survive, why we have all this digest system? It's an intelligent question. If you think about this is the only way you should be. What these people doesn't know is that the DNA is a program. It's a program that you can change. It's a program that adapted. If you go, if you go to, to the body uh, 10,000 years ago, you will find a totally different programmation. If you see the DNA from people that is a schema that lives in a, in, a gla, gla, um, in a ice, their DNA is totally different. Because we are the most adaptable uh, uh, beings in, in the planet. You're so adaptable that you can smoke and don't die for, for 50 years. You can eat meat, you can drink alcohol, you can take drugs and stay alive. That's proof how adaptable you are. So what happened is uh, that people forgot, it's that first, all the power of the human being is concentrated in the top area. The rest of the body is driving by, by the top. You have your brain system that is totally disactivated. 
You use 5% of your brain capacity. And all the rest, for the doctors and scientists, it's a big unknown. They have no idea what you are able to do. So when sometimes appear people that just can get mentally these and make it fly away, people be like, oh! Ludzie tak reagują. Oh my gosh! O mój Boże! It's a, it's a special being! Jest, jest to nadzwyczajna istota. And then they start to study and try to understand how the person can throw materials away with their mind. Naukowcy zaczynają studiować mózg, w jaki sposób człowiek może poruszać przedmioty materialne. But this is so easy, it's just try to explore the rest and you are going to be able to do a lot more than this. And this also shows the, the sad ignorance about uh, the people have from for us themselves. One day I was on TV in Brazil with one endocrinologist and I asked him, what is the pineal gland for? He couldn't say. Nie mógł odpowiedzieć. He was so embarrassed. E, tak bardzo się przestraszył. That, that he only said like this. The scientists are still study this pineal gland, but they, they are not important at all. This gland is just to re regulate your hungry. That's what they say. And they try to make you feel, make, make you look like you are the one that is stupid. And when we ask what is the uh, uh, pituitaria gland for, they say, pituitaria gland is made to, to regulate the other glands. And that's what they know. Tyle tylko wiedzą. But you know, these two glands in your brain are everything. To wszystko, to jest wszystko. The most important thing that you have in your body, but they are atrophy. And they become atrophy exactly because you develop this system down here. I want to tell you about light. First step, light becomes sound. Sound is light. It's vibration. It's frequency. Częstotliwość. Waves. Fala. And these produce something that you can hear sometimes, and sometimes you cannot hear. And it's not because you're not able to hear that the song is so not sound. It's the first, the first level that the light becomes accessible for, for be manifesting Earth. The Earth has a sound. The universe has sound. The sun has sound. The cellulose has sound. Because this is a natural uh, developing for light in Earth. The second level of light, the, when li light manifests in Earth, will be the color. Color is light. It's light in a different vibration. It's light in a different frequency. And then, light is also smell. And light is also taste. And light is also Material, matter, all is light. Wszystko jest światłem. So when we say people that we living on light, my ludzie, którzy żyjemy w świetle, people think that we have to be in the sun. Ludzie Eating myślą, the sun. Ludzie myślą, że mamy połykać sło, y, promienie słoneczne. You also living on light, but you believe you living on food. So, sound, color, smell, taste, and matter. How this work in our body? Sound, color, smell, taste, and matter. That's the way your body was designed. To receive light in all vibration and frequencies. The problem is all these sense that we call sense have a straight relationship with the pituitary gland. All your sense have connection with your pituitary gland. And the pituitary gland is activated by using this sense in all the capacity. But 
Because we develop this system here, we start to block this channel that connects your sense to the pituitary gland. And we start to use only this process here to keep your body alive. This system was not like this before. Doesn't exist evolution. We are divine. We are God. We are perfect. The, the reason that because we lost our memory, we had to start over again. But all information is still in your DNA, but it's not activated. The doctors, when they, they try to uh, study the DNA in a physical aspect, they see a lot of connection that is disconnect. And, they, it, and they, they question, why this is disconnect? And the reason is, is because when you don't use something, naturally the function will be, will be disconnect. We don't use Nie atrophy and, and lose the function. I przestaje funkcjonować. So, when we start to use the taste more than we use the rest of the sense, we have to develop a waste system to keep your body function. Because the taste was developed for you to experience light in a meta stage. In like fruits, for example. Fruits are light in a meta stage. So when you have your taste, you, the, the, the goal is to eat fruit. Because if you eat fruit, you don't need a digest system. The fruit will just go away from you naturally. And uh, the reason why we have this system now is because we are eating all type of, of uh, taste, chemical taste, non-natural taste. And your body doesn't know what to do. So your DNA starts to have a, a stomach to hold, to hold and try to solve the things that you are, your mouth couldn't do it. Because your original digest system is your mouth. This liquid that we produce is enough to dissolve any type of fruit. You don't need acids, you don't need enzymes, because if you, if you eat, for example, an orange fruit or, or a pineapple, you keep in your mouth, the sense goes to your brain, you dissolve everything, and you have two choices. One is to throw away the things that, that, that you don't need it. And the other is to swell. But if it's only fruit, your stomach never needs to exist or work. Because then this go away. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't need to stop in any place. Nie trzeba się zatrzymać w jakimś miejscu. We didn't have seven meters of intestine. Nie mieliśmy siedmiometrowych jelit. No, before we had only one line, very, very short and straight. 